Good day there, once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today guys, we're going to be doing a review of the ASUS Republic of Gamers G752 VS OC Gaming Laptop, a laptop that I was lucky enough to check out at the ASUS Republic of Gamers booth at PAX Australia 2016, and the guys at ASUS, after we exchanged some contact details, were kind enough to send me through a review version of this unit. Now, we are actually going to be splitting this review up into two parts here today. Part A will be an unboxing and a review of how the laptop physically looks and feels, and part B will be more focused on looking at the internal components of the laptop and how it performs as a result with both games and other system intensive software. It's also worth mentioning here that all gameplay that you are seeing in this video is recorded off of this laptop, which means that any gameplay you are seeing is very reflective of what this laptop is capable of from a performance standpoint. Anyway, enough mumbo jumbo, let's get this show on the road. This is what you're going to be seeing when you open the box for the first time. Now I can't show you the box itself due to all of the postage and handling stuff that's plastered all over it, but this is what you'll be greeted with when you open the box itself. And as we can see, the laptop itself takes up the majority of the box space here. On the right we have ourselves our larger than average power pack. Trust me, this is a bloody huge power pack here. And just under the laptop you can find a small hidden compartment per se that has all of your standard issue user guides and warranty booklets, along with a special ASUS cable tie to complete the picture of your purchase. But anyway, let's turn our attention to the one thing that we all came for in this video, the laptop itself. Physically, what do we get? Well, the first thing we have to address is the size and weight of this thing. The dimensions of the unit are 33.3 centimeters in length, 42.8 centimeters in width, and 2.3 to 5.1 centimeters in depth. Now, even for a 17.3 inch screen laptop, that is still a pretty large unit by comparison to your more standard issue laptop on the market. This in combination with its weight of 7.5 kilograms makes the laptop just a little bit more of an effort when it comes to transporting it around. But that is to be expected when we are dealing with a laptop of this scale that is this beefy as far as the internals go. More details on that in a couple of seconds. Now one of the more prominent features that we have to take note of here that also has a huge part to play in the size of this laptop is the giant vents that are located on the back of the unit. As we know, most laptops will exhaust their heat out of the underside of the chassis, which is why your legs tend to get so bloody hot when you use a laptop on your lap for long periods of time. However, with the G752VS, the heat is managed in a way that not only makes more sense for your own comfort, but also makes the unit itself less likely to overheat when under full load. All heat generated by this laptop is sent out through the two vents that are located on the left and right hand side of the back panel. Now not only does this work amazingly from a functional standpoint and ensures that the laptop always remains cool without giving your legs a complimentary burn, but it also looks pretty damn cool and gives the unit a very nice aesthetic appeal that says that you are a gamer. Whether or not that's something you're after in your PC setup, that's up for you to decide. As for our side panels on on the right hand side we have the power pack input, ethernet port, HDMI input, a mini display port, two USB inputs, one micro USB input, and two 3.5mm audio jacks for headphone and for microphone inputs. This means that both headsets with 3.5mm audio jack configurations and USB configurations will work with this machine. And in all honesty, having your current headphones work with this laptop is an absolute must because the default speaker configuration on this machine is average at best. This comes from the fact that the speakers are located on the underside of the laptop as well as behind the screen which creates quite a bit of interference and doesn't give you a really good sound quality. Moving on to the left hand side of the machine we have two more USB inputs and the disk drive. Yes this is a laptop that still has a disk drive for all of those out there like me who prefer to buy their games via disk as well as an SD card reader. So as far as ports go you're going to be pretty damn sorted with this unit. Now once we open up this laptop we get our first look at the 2.5mm click distance 30 key rollover anti-ghosting full-size keyboard. Now that was a whole lot of mumbo jumbo for a keyboard so let's elaborate here. The anti-ghosting feature means that all commands are instantly recorded and in the right order which sounds fairly standard issue for any keyboard right? I mean that's what keyboards are meant to do. With this keyboard's anti-ghosting feature however you can hit up to 30 keys at the same time and the PC will still know which was hit first and in what order and will act accordingly 
accordingly. Each key is also full sized here, including a full size numpad and a full size selection of arrow keys, which is very, very nice for gaming in particular. And just in case you weren't quite convinced regarding this keyboard just yet, it also has five macro keys, as well as a unique couple of keys that have a camera and ROG logo on them. We will be talking about those a little bit later in the review. The keyboard also has a red backlight to give you just that little bit more style for while you are dominating the battlefield. And on the topic of lighting, the screen back panel and venting system also lights up and can be turned off to save battery also. I have to admit that both playing games and typing on this keyboard did feel both very responsive and comfortable, which was partly thanks to the nice amount of resting space for your hands in front of the keyboard on this laptop. What I will say, however, is that if you are using the laptop on a shallow desk, you will run into a position where the sharp edge of the laptop digs into your wrist, making it uncomfortable to use over long periods of time. So if you can, have a desk with plenty of room to rest your elbows on. Turning our attention to the screen of the unit, the laptop is G-Sync compatible, with the screen being locked to 75Hz with G-Sync enabled, meaning that you are going to be locked to a frame rate of 75 frames per second while this feature is active. Throughout my testing of the product, I did not have G-Sync enabled, just so we could see just how smooth the games I wanted to test really could get. The screen is also of a matte finish, meaning that you are going to be experiencing little to no glare while using this unit in many different scenarios, including outdoor lighting scenarios. Oh, who am I kidding? This is a gaming laptop. Gamers don't go outside. Well, at least when they can help it. Now, that's everything about the physical attributes of the G752 VS, but let's take a look at the specs and the benchmarks I was able to take down for it. For our CPU, we have an Intel Core i7 6A20HK clocked at 2.7 GHz out of the box and can be overclocked to 3.6 GHz in turbo mode, alongside the beefy NVIDIA GTX 1070 graphics card with 8 GB of DDR5 graphical memory. Now alongside that we have 64 GB of DDR4 RAM, dual 512 GB Samsung SM951 NVMe SSDs, and a single 1TB 7200 RPM Western Digital Hard Drive, all mounted on the ASUS Tech 9752VS motherboard. And now you know where the name of the PC comes from, ladies and gentlemen. Now on paper, those specs sound all well and good and all, but it begs the question, how does this system hold up in game? To find out, I tested two new games that are just new on the market, and one older game that is renowned at times for having less than ideal optimization. Those games being Titanfall 2, Battlefield 1, and Planetside 2. Now Titanfall 2 was a game I expected the PC to have no issues with, and my expectations were not disappointed in the slightest. The game ran at a solid 80 to 120 FPS, with everything turned up to max, no matter how much action was on the screen at the present time. This being a game on the Source engine, however, that really isn't renowned for its graphics. I knew this would be an easy victory for this laptop. The G752 VS did impress me, however, with its performance in Battlefield 1, also maintaining a solid 60 FPS in the largest firefights, and even reaching highs of 90 FPS when the action had died down, all the while on ultra high graphics. And we have to keep in mind that Battlefield 1 is being marked one of the most graphically pleasing, if not the most graphically pleasing, FPS on the market to this day. So that's quite an achievement for this laptop. The real test, however, was going to be Planetside 2, a game that has been well known for its lacking optimization over the years that has seen even the beefiest PCs of today, four years after the game's release, struggle to maintain decent frame rates. With the graphics turned up to Ultra, Planetside 2 was able to maintain a solid 45 FPS in large-scale battles involving hundreds of players, and at non-hectic times it remained at a peak of around about 80 to 90 FPS. Now considering all the performance issues that has plagued Planetside 2, that is a hell of an accomplishment by this laptop, especially considering the graphics setting that Planetside 2 was set to for this test. However, the most impressive part about all of this is despite the graphic settings being set so high for these games, and despite the fact that my play sessions in these games were two hours or longer for the tests, the laptop never got overly hot or started chugging due to overheating. While the temperature for the CPU and the GPU peaked at around about 75 degrees Celsius, all of the hot air was vented out in a timely manner, and the laptop never chugged performance-wise, which just goes to show just how impressive this laptop is is when it comes to heat management, and my hat really does have to go off to the guys at ASUS for what they have done here. While idling, the laptop stayed at a temperature of around about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. 
However, another edge that this laptop has over others is its attention to detail as far as the crossover between hardware and software goes. As per mentioned before, on the keyboard there are two keys, one with an ROG logo and one with a video camera on it. The key with the ROG logo on it acts as a hotkey to get straight to the ROG Gaming Center where you can quickly check your graphics card, memory allocation, as well as what kind of performance your CPU is running at, as well as how much RAM is being used at any given point in time, not to mention that the ROG ROG Gaming Center's heads-up display and its overall design is very intuitive and very easy to read and also looks quite nice. Whereas the video camera key on the keyboard activates the pre-installed XSplit Gamescaster that comes with a full access license out of the box when you purchase this laptop to easily start live stream without any annoying alt tabbing. Now while these might be relatively small features, they show that Republic of Gamers had the gamers and even the on-the-go streamers and YouTubers in mind when it comes to making things more convenient convenient for their target audience. Something else that makes this laptop fantastic for streamers and YouTubers that are looking for an on-the-go PC is the amount of RAM this machine has. As we all know, 64GB of RAM is damn well overkill if you're looking at just gaming with the computer. But for rendering videos, the more RAM you can get your hands on, the better. So with that in mind, I decided to render my latest World of Warships video on both my current full-time PC, running an Intel Core i7-2600K clocked at 3.4GHz, NVIDIA GTX 680, and 16GB RAM, as well as the G752VS to see how the render times would differ between the two machines. Now unfortunately I couldn't do a straight up comparison as my normal PC was running Sony Vegas Pro 13 with GPU rendering enabled whereas the G752VS was using Magix Pro 14 which is the same program functionally with Sony outsourcing a bit with the GPU rendering disabled as I simply couldn't get enabled no matter how hard I tried. However, despite that, the G752VS still rendered out a 23 minute, 8 second long, 1080p, 60fps video with color correction and sharpening effects applied in 1 hour, 35 minutes, 37 seconds without GPU rendering in play. On the other hand, my full time PC did the exact same render in 3 hours, 42 minutes, 50 seconds with GPU rendering in play. Even with GPU rendering in play on my current PC, it still did it two hours slower than a machine that was not using GPU rendering. So as we can see here folks, for gaming video content creators out there who find themselves constantly on the move, this is going to be the perfect laptop for you. Even more so when you have a program that allows GPU rendering to be a thing. The pure concept of how fast those render times must be is just mind-boggling to me. So. After all of that, what is my final verdict here today? For the purchase price of 2999 Australian dollars, it is a pretty hefty price to pay, especially when you could potentially get a desktop with pretty much the same hardware for a cheaper price. So, with that in mind, if you are a gamer who is always on the move with their job, then this is a machine for you, as it will keep you future-proofed for some time as far as the hardware goes, provides the performance that is equivalent to a high-end gaming desktop, and is comfortable to use in most situations for long periods of time. If you are a streamer or a YouTuber that spends a lot of time making content while traveling and at conventions, this is also a gaming laptop that could tickle your fancy. But as we mentioned before, you will be able to match the specs of this machine by building your own desktop for a much cheaper price if you know where to look. Sure, the G752VS might be an awesome looking machine that will provide you fantastic quality gaming and video rendering experiences, but you do pay considerably extra here only because this is a laptop. You are paying much extra for the mobility aspect of it. And considering that this is a bigger laptop than most, that mobility isn't as accessible by comparison to other laptops that you might be used to. If you are someone who plays games primarily at home and only uses a laptop every once in a while for while you are at university studying, then this might be going a bit far overkill. But let's be honest, if you are a uni student, then a laptop as pricey as this one would be something of a fantasy. I know we're all in debt equally. But with that said, the G752 is still a beast of a machine that will serve you well if you need an on-the-go high-end computer for all of your gaming needs, and is something that definitely holds up to the par with the most modern and demanding games, and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. And folks, with all that said, that's going to wrap up today's review on the G752 
to VSOC Gaming Laptop by ASUS Republic of Gamers. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please do feel free to backhand that like button, it would be greatly appreciated. If you find yourself backhanding that like button and you're new to the channel, backhand that subscribe button whilst you are at it. And if you've got any experience with the ASUS G752 Republic of Gamers laptop, let me know what your experiences are like in the comment section down below. What do you like? What don't you like about this laptop? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say and what you think about this unit. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Have a good